Hello everyone, Dave Lander here from DaveLander.com. This is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for being here. It looks like the numbers are going up week by week. We're getting the word out a little bit better, so thanks for showing up. Sorry it's been such a pain to find. The good news is I think I get the links figured out, so if you register, you should be good for forever, hopefully, until I forget to add a show, but it should be good for at least the next couple of months. So what are we talking about? Well, obviously, current market conditions, I have a plethora of things to say about that. Your questions on trading, your favorite stock picks. If you don't buy, wait till we get the live charts for the stock picks and then ask about one stock at a time. Boy, this kind of got all messed up or bunched up right at the end. So we're going to focus on more on doing trading stuff. As I've been saying quite a bit, I've been really cognizant of what I've been doing, especially over the last few months or so and, and trying to share as much of that as possible with you. I want to talk a little bit about avoiding internal conflict as a trader. And believe me, we generate a lot of internal conflict. We generate a lot of regret that we have to deal with. And it's not easy, but it does get easier over time. And in some, in some cases, it could be harder because you know what you're supposed to be doing. And, and I'll get to that. I want to follow up with a simple system that could be the key to crypto because crypto right now is really inefficient or it's an inefficient market, especially the SHYT coins. And I wanna follow up a little bit about inefficiency, which I talked about in the Trading Simplified show, which will post on Friday, October 22nd on my website. And inefficiency, I think, can be the really, real holy grail of trading. And I wanna talk a little bit about trading hot, hot IPO. So we've got a bunch of more stuff to talk about too. So. Rather than tell you about all those things I'm gonna talk about, let's just talk about it. There's a display on the screen, as you know, you can lose money trading orders often summing up. All predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. So as I would say, I've been talking about this trading stuff and really cognizant of it. And I've been really cognizant of the psychological ups and downs that we all go through and paying a lot of attention to the Facebook group especially the the newer traders out there who are struggling a little bit and one thing that i will tell you i worked one-on-one -on -one with somebody a few months ago and i explained to him that he was a lot closer than he than he thought he was and and you're going to be surprised at how close you are and it's going to just click little by little by little and then one day you're going to find yourself consistently making money you're still going to have the ups and downs but you'll finally you'll finally get it. So as I've been saying quite a bit, people ask me what I do, I tell them, and then if they get to know me a little better, we become friends, if we become friends, they're like, what exactly do you do? And, and they all ask that exact question, which is kind of ironic. And my best way to explain it is I buy things that go up and sell things that go down. And when you're dealing with inefficient markets, this kid, actually work quite well and i'm going to show you what i mean by that in just a few minutes based on some facebook posts and based on some texts i received last week based on my my own internal states of conflict it's like i know someone just became a a psychologist and a, and a nurse practitioner and uh she said her husband is her her greatest subject you know so i'm kind of like my own greatest subject when it comes to the trading psychology, because believe me, I go through the ups and downs and I'm I'm a super emotional guy. But based on the post, again, I wanted to talk about avoiding states of regret as much as possible. Now, as a trend follower, and I've done complete presentations just on this, you're almost always in a state of regret. You're either giving up open profits or you have open losses and you're waiting for that stop to get hit. Anyway, this happened yesterday, and this was a text I received. Damn, wanted to sell CFLT yesterday. This was down when it was down a few bucks, I think three bucks on the day. And this gentleman had a lot of regret over this, and he was very angry that the stock was down three points. Well, by the end of the day, it recovered and it closed flat on the day as you can see and then the next day that uh, would be today and this is not as of the close but you can see that it did continue to follow through to the upside now if he would have 
exited some or all of his shares, he might be regretting that because it would be two or three points lower at least. So you can't use, and, and Andy Duke talks a lot about this, and um, I think, what's the guy's name who, who I could ever, Michael Lewis talks about this in the Undoing Project, and Tversky and Kannerman, and I hope I said the names right, they talk a lot about it too. It basically, it's a hindsight bias that we're all guilty of, okay? And you got to be really, really careful not to put yourself in the state of regret, like, oh, this thing's up three or four points. I should take some profits off. It's like, no, I should let it run. I'm supposed to let it run. Let me let it run. And then the next day, it's down three or four points. You're like, damn, I knew I should have taken those, pro taken those profits off. And you create this internal conflict. And one way to avoid that is to just follow the plan, is to just do it. And, and you know, <laughs> trading would be so easy if we just if we just did what we were supposed to do. But unfortunately, it's not sometimes. But sometimes what what makes it hard is the fact that it can be so easy. This Curtis Face quote in my head, I can't think of it exactly, but that's one of the things that makes trading so hard is on the surface, it could often be that easy. And it could often be as easy as, hey, I have a stop in place. If it hits a stop, I get out, as I'll show you in one second. If it doesn't hit the stop, I stay in. Nothing else to do. Let me drop a mic, you know? Okay, this was a post last week. I just want to follow up on it real quick. And he was having a bad day. And basically, I said, I did say a few more things and say, okay, easier said than done. But basically, if something's going against you, you don't have to worry about it if it hits a stop because it'll no longer go against you. And if, it's, if it has it at the stop, then it should continue to go, or you don't have to do anything as long as it goes in your favor by not hitting the stop. Here was the original setup. This is, we talked about this last week, so let me just get through it quickly. Entry there, stop was down here, came dangerously close to stopping out. Raise your hand if you've got a stop down here and you see the market begin to drop and you just don't, you know, it's a quarter point away from the stop. Screw that, I'm getting out. I, as I told a thousand times before, years back, I recommended Dell as a short to my father, and I was going to stop out like at, I forget what it was, I think I was going to stop out at 60, and I got to 59.90, and I called my dad and said, oh, let's just get out, and it was one of those brokers back then where you, you could dial a phone and punch in symbols, and you had to punch in, you know, three letters, the A, B, C, D, you know, over and over to get the, the quote you want, but anyway, I did a lot of phone trading back in the day, back when I had a day job. And, and I think Dell, if memory serves, it was 60 and it went down to single digits. You know, my father used to, years ago, rest his soul, but he used to, uh, he used to harass me every now and then, Christmas, New Year's, holidays, whatever. Remember that time we shorted that Dell? You know, it stopped out for like two bucks loss and then it imploded. Anyway, so follow your plan as hard as that could be. IPT is up here. And this was the day that I think it was George. Well, I know it was George, and I think George is here tonight, was complaining. And as I said last week, if it stops out, and a few minutes ago too, if it stops out, it's no longer a problem, okay? You just have to say next and move on. Drop an F-bomb, you have to. And I will, believe me, when I get stopped out, or I do when I get stopped out. And that's another thing too about being cognizant. Like I said earlier, I, I try to write down, if I make an audible F, I actually write it down in my little trading journal just to see how many F bombs I drop. And you know, my good days, I don't drop one, <laughs> which is amazing. And again, unless you're stopped out, it's not a problem. The reason I want to do a follow up on this and knock on wood, you know, maybe really knock on wood, it's rallied nicely. It's up about three bucks off of its lows. And it's nothing to brag about. Yeah, it's slightly in the in the plus column, but at least it's come back a little bit. And you could have easily gotten shaken out when you're having a rotten day and you just want to pull the plug on everything. By the way, I need to, didn't get around to doing it this week, but I guess over the next few weeks with the S&P at brand new highs, I need to do some follow-ups on why you should follow the plan. And we'll see how the equity was before the sell-off, I did see how the equity was afterwards. Now, 
again, it's impossible to avoid a state of regret because if you're a trend follower, and by the way, the only way to make money in a market is to what? Capture a trend. Most of the time, you're going to be giving up open profits. And again, I've done presentations just on this where I show where you're giving up open profits, even on fantastic trades, 300%, 400% gains, maybe 70 to 80% of the time, you'll be in a state of regret. And I forget the guy's name, uh, who a client about three years ago sent me a YouTube on this guy. He's a, he's a big fund, he's a big hedge fund manager. I mean, he's big, big that way too. <laughs> Anyway, one thing, again, is micromanaging, like I was saying earlier, it's like you have this hindsight bias. It's like you people think that you should have made a different decision based on that hindsight bias. And The Undoing Project was pretty good by Michael Lewis, was actually a book about Tversky and Kannerman. I wish it would have had a little bit more undoing to it than, than, uh, than it did, but good stuff from them. And then, of course, you could always go straight to the source, thinking fast and slow. And on my to-do list one day is to reread Thinking Fast and Slow. It's about that thick. And it's it's uh, it's a lot of it's pretty good, but a lot of it you have to kind of work your way through. And many people have kind of ripped them off over the years or borrowed from them heavily and you know putting things in, in uh, a little bit more easier to understand format or whatever. But I would recommend you do go to the source on that. And you gotta be careful with the hindsight of micromanaging. Micromanagement works quite often shorter term, but never longer term. Remember, we're playing for an outlier, okay? For the occasional outlier, hopefully not just one. And if you look at the current portfolio, I think we have a couple in there up over uh, 100%. And, you know, as I said, I know I do talk about winners a lot, right? Uh, <laughs> We had one that stopped out for for 500 percent, and of course you could be in a state of regret if you looked at it when it was up 600 percent, and you were aggravated that you let it draw down to 500 percent where the stop was for stopping out. Well, if you play that game, you got stopped out maybe up 10 percent or 15 percent, and never caught that longer term trend. Now, one thing that I've been thinking a lot about this year is the pain of missing out, POMO, and I don't know if that's a good enough good acronym or not for that, but pain of missing out is when you look at something you like and you don't act upon it, okay? So I guess you just, in order to fix that, you say, am I going to act on this or not? I, the POMO, I've got a, a POMO pretty bad because I got a text from someone, same person actually with the CFLT, and said, hey, I just took that TGA trade you had in your landry list, and I'm immediately up $760. Thank you so much. And I'm like, oh, crap. You know, I thought, well, it's mostly short. It's only one long. Why even bother? But I should have made that definitive decision to say, you know what? I see this trade. I'm not going to take it because of this, or I will take it. And you can't, you can't have it both ways. Now, as far as the pain of missing out, the irony is that the longer you're at this, the more POMO you're going to have. And as George pointed out, he was frustrated because he's seen all these stocks move and he knows that he should have taken the trades. Well, I'm talking about, well, that's the hard part, even after you've been at this for a while. And the thing is, and I'm kind of getting a little ahead of myself, but that does get a little harder with, with age and experience because you really know you should be taking them. And his his issue was a bit of confidence. And the way you get to gain the confidence is, of course, decrease your size. And then there's no substitute for getting the reps in, making the trades, more and more trades. So again, the, the irony is, the longer you're at this, the more pomo you have. One thing that, that kills me, I think it's a positive thing, but it, it sort of can be frustrating, is I look at 2,000 charts a night. And I'll probably start feeling like that in crypto too. I probably go through, I probably went through 10,000 crypto charts today. And that's not probably too much of an exaggeration. But you will see a lot of opportunities missed. But when you see those, just say, okay, was there a pattern? Should I have caught that? And I know I've said this a thousand times. And sometimes you just can't kiss all the women. Sometimes things just take off. And it's like, oh man, I think that stock went up. 
40 points or whatever. But there was no pattern that it came out of. It was just kind of out of the blue. So you can't beat yourself up on those. Now, of course, you need to ask yourself, again, should your clock move? If not, move on, as I just said. Perfectionists need not apply. And I've done complete presentations just on that. The market doesn't move in exacts. And you're always going to have that hindsight bias. And you just have to accept this, this imperfect world. Accept the fact that you're not going to get the exact high. Accept the fact that in the end, you're going to get stopped out and give up a lot of those open profits. But hopefully, and I hate to use the word hope, but hopefully if you're following everything correctly, you'll catch enough outliers to where, yeah, yeah, I gave up some of those open profits, but I stopped out at 100% gain or a 500% gain. And that was a pretty good run. And I'm going to shout next. And move on and then if i did make 100 percent or whatever the amount is positive trade i'll say hey so long and thanks for all the fish right now one thing that you're going to have to be careful of is maybe narrow your focus a little bit bit and then build from there okay maybe find one pattern you want to trade like land your life pullbacks or persistent pullbacks or tkos Okay, I know I'm rattling off. I said trade one pattern to the, and I rattle off 100. But figure out one pattern and get good with that. And Slindrowski once said, all you need is one pattern to be successful. And I'll show you something really simple in any fishing markets that works incredibly well. Same thing I showed you last week, though, right? <laughs> now, is it on your radar as a potential trade or not? And that's me kind of beating myself up there for not taking the TGA trade. And... So that's that's where I have the hindsight bias. It's like it's like, well, am I gonna take this or not? It's like I don't think I'm gonna take it, you know. And instead of making an actual plan not to take it, then all of a sudden somebody reminds me of it, and I look at it, it's too late. It's already up 30% from the day. So you do have to make that decision, and more importantly, you're going to have to live with it. In fact, that's the key to trading, that's the key to life. The other thing, too, is you gotta be really cognizant of your your mental capital and lately i've been a little burnt out because I'm, I'm i'm chasing crypto i'm doing some intraday stuff i'm trading e-minis and then i'm also trading my core methodology and you know i might have to take some of my own lessons i am getting spread a little bit thin and i gotta watch that you know and, and make sure i'm not i'm not doing that myself but you do have to do things that will reduce a your internal conflicts b your regret and and c free you up a little bit and one way to do that is to reduce observations and how many times have you looked at a chart and you see a bar about that big and it's just imploding and you're like oh crap you know and you you, you just pull the plug right and then you happen to look at a daily chart and it's about that big. It's like a little narrow range bar and it was just a little bit of a blip on the bar. Now, the best thing you can do, and I don't do this enough, but I'm doing it more and more and more and more and more, is just make alerts work for you, okay? Set an alert near the initial profit target maybe depends on the price of stock obviously but maybe a point away so you know it's getting close okay set a an alert near the stop so you know that the stop is getting near and if neither one of those alerts go off there's nothing to do and we're talking about the core methodology here but also if you're watching some things intraday like i do a little bit too much of then maybe set an alert at the low of the day, set an alert at the high of the day, or at some level in between where you might think about a trade or consider a trade and then go about your life. Now, the wonderful thing is a limit order. I forgot to place a limit order in one account a couple of days ago, and I think I mentioned this in the Facebook group, and it only set me back $400, but you know, if I did that every day, and this is a problem with monetizing, not monetizing, but annualizing this stuff. If I lose $400 a day due to carelessness or stupidness, then that's $100,000 a year. 
So that's something to kind of, you kind of need to let that sink in. So $100 is $25,000 a year, $100 mistake or $100 just kind of pissed away on a, as a G trade. But if you lose $400, especially unnecessarily, and that 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 kind of pains me a lot. And I'll tell you exactly what I did. I, I, I bought some puts on a particular stock that was on the Landry list. I've already forgotten what stock it is. It might've been Zim. And I set an options order to flip out half at 100% profit. So I'd have the other half for a position trade, at least for a few days. And I placed it across multiple accounts and actually two accounts in this case. And I placed it in one account, but I forgot to place the order in the second account. And again, I got hit for 400 bucks and it sucks. But if I had a limit order in place, then I would have, I would have lost the 400 bucks. So even if you've been at this a while, you'll still make mistakes. And like I said, a few days in, in Facebook, it's like, I wish I didn't have to keep relearning lessons, but we do. And when we relearn a lesson, it could be quite painful. The other thing you could do, let's say like today in the um, OPLX, is that the name of the stock? We'll get to it in one second. But it was running pretty good. So I put in a trailing stop on half and I got stopped out for that first half of or half a loaf of the trade. So that's the other thing you can do if you're not using the limit orders for the IPTs. Now, one thing that I can occasionally be guilty of is playing both ends against the middle. And sometimes I'll be long, let's say a call option and the market begins to implode a little bit. And then I'll think, you know what, Dave? Why don't you just buy some puts? And I'll buy some puts. And then all of a sudden I'm in a state of internal conflict because do I want the market to go up or do I want the market to go down and i try try being a keyword in that sentence if i do have some calls that get away from me and go pretty much worthless i don't try to short the other side i'm talking about like an individual issues maybe the overall market might be a little bit different but especially like an individual issue or an etf or something i just let it go and keep the keep the calls on the books and just see what happens but you got to be careful not to play both ends against the middle. And then you're going to, because if you do, you're going to create this internal conflict and you're not really sure which way you want the market to go. So pick a side and try to stay on that side. And of course, you know, let's beat the dead horse here. Follow your plan. You have a plan, right? You know, sometimes I'm guilty of not having a plan. And that's why as a preacher over and over again, it's really easy to follow the trading service plan. I mean, yeah, I'll still drop an F-bomb, don't get me wrong. And sometimes I get pissed off when something goes against me because it's not only hurting me financially, but I know some of you have likely taken that trade and it's hurting you too. So now I feel personally responsible for your losses, even though you're responsible and hey, you know what? I'm just a trend following moron. So if you're following me, read all other disclaimers, you know, you can't blame me, but I do take it personally. So, but again, Following that trading service is a lot easier for me than it is for all this other trading I'm doing. If I if there was a way for me to do a trading service and all the other trading that I was doing, then one, I guarantee you my trading would be a hell of a lot better because I, I'm following my plan, right? And then I probably wouldn't take as many mediocre trades because I want to look good. And that's kind of like the idea behind a core trading service is to to try to show you the best kind of showcase the methodology and then there's some ancillary things that might be a little bit kind of crazy and volatile but i still like and that's like in the landry list and some other things that that might be of interest find a way into the landry list and if you if you have time uh, you can look at the frequently asked questions and read about the landry list and and what's the what, what the service is all about and i'll put a link in post now, let me shift gears for a second here. Let me take a look at a couple of questions that are coming in, and then uh, I want to shift gears and talk a little bit about IPOs and whether or not I'm confusing the issue with the facts. Hey, Dave, hope you're well. Market looking a bit more positive here. Yes, it is. Brand new highs in S&P 500, right? A pullback from here would generate lots of setups. So you're about the core methodology. And okay, let's take a look at UPST. We'll get to that. 
look at a pattern that makes sense to you and focus on it a while, or look at the past trades to see which pattern has worked the best for you and focus on it. Yeah, John, I fully agree. And I noticed that you've gravitated towards IPOs and you've taken that ball and ran with it. I always get those all confused. And, you know, if it makes sense to you, do it. And I've, it, it's taken me a long time to figure out transitional setups and these pullback related setups and things like things of that nature. And they just make a lot of sense to me. And then in any fishing markets, I think sometimes you could just buy things that are going up as we as we have been doing in IPOs and in crypto for some of you guys. Now, I always say don't confuse the issue with facts when it comes to stocks. And earlier today, I asked my wife, hey, have you heard of this? Uh, what's the name of the company? Whatever the hair care company is, Upliflex. I can't think of the name of it now. And she's like, are you confusing the issue with facts? Because I always preach, just look at the charts, follow the charts, and, and don't don't worry so much about the facts, okay? Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it going sideways? It's going up, you want to figure out a place to get on, okay? If it's going down, you want to either get out of the way or you want to short it, right? Well, then asking her that, she's like, hey, aren't you breaking some rules here? Because she's pretty cognizant of that. And... With an IPO pioneer setup in the IPO course, and boy, it's been it's been a while, huh? 2014. I was worried as soon as I published that course, the patterns have stopped working, but it's been wonderful ever since. I was thinking earlier tonight, this is the this is the only pat the only course that's actually cost me some money in some ways because I actually lost well, I lost at least one client because they were doing so well in the IPOs. And it's like, look. You're missing the point. These IPOs will come and go, and and maybe it'll get good again in six years. You know, knock on wood, seven years, whatever. Now, but there's been periods of time where IPOs haven't been that great, as many of you know. And you also want to have a core methodology to to stick with the entire time, and then go out and do some probes into these IPOs when the time comes. But anyway, getting back to the the IPO, when you're in the pioneer phase, I think it's okay to ask. What's the story, fad or glory? Now, the pioneer phase is early in the IPO process. First few weeks, buy it B would be a pioneer type of setup because it could happen really soon. Um, buy it B plus one, buy it B with the SMA, five SMA for higher price stocks. I suppose first deep retracements could also be a pioneer pattern, it all depends. But in general, early, early in the IPO process, when they first come public, it, you're considered, it's considered a pioneer setup. And the reason I use the word pioneer is like the American pioneers, as I said in the IPO course, you're either gonna get the gold or the arrows in your back. And the chance of the gold makes it all worthwhile. Now, when I saw the buy at B in Academy, I just couldn't pull the trigger because it's a brick and mortar retail company. And, and as we all know, brick and mortar retail companies are dead. You know, which, how many malls are left in your city? You know, how many, how many uh, big buildings like that are empty? So I have to stick true to my trend following, my core trend following methodology. And when it made its first little pullback, I said, okay. Now it might be worthwhile. So back here in the pioneer phase, what's the story, fad or glory? And then once the issue establishes itself a little bit, establishes itself a little bit, and makes a pioneer, I'm sorry, makes a secondary setup, okay, like a pullback. So this is a this is a really good run in here, nice little pullback. It's like, all right, I'm gonna take it. Then I don't confuse the issue with facts. Now I don't believe in theme trading. But it's great when a theme comes along that fits your technical analysis narrative, okay? So my narrative is, wow, nice trend, some, a lot of excitement for this stock, bit of a pullback here, fairly deep, or deep enough at least, so that's taken some people out, right? Okay? And I just have to take this setup, even though it's a retail stock. Ugh, ugh. But the heck with it. I'm going to take it. 
And that's how it went on the trading service. So back here, we had a buy at B. It did not take the buy at B. By the way, did anybody here take the buy at B? John, did you take that buy at B? Then it makes the pullback, as I just said. And you could see in the open portfolio, this triggered way back in November of last. Holy moly, that's almost a year. Wow, that's pretty cool. John said he saw it, but he passed. Okay, did you take the pullback setup, right? <laughs> I hope you did. So that's one of the bigger winners, as you can see in the portfolio, 150%, that in the poke in the eye. Not bad for sitting around. John said he took the setup. Fantastic, all right, that's good. Now here's the Olaplex is the word I was trying to look for earlier. And truth be told, I, I was watching this thing and thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it on, I guess, the 19th. And then I saw the post from Mike P in the, in the Facebook group, and he said his wife loves the products. And I shouldn't confuse the issue with facts, but then I remembered, you know, I did a IPO course like seven years ago. And, and in that course, I said, you want some excitement in these things. And I'm not saying fundamentals, but I'm saying some kind of excitement, like can they cure cancer or, and it doesn't have to be splitting the atom. It could be like splitting the bean and making burritos. It could be a burrito company or whatever, but it has to have some kind of excitement. And Mike pointed out that his wife loves these products and they're expensive as heck um they're uh they're higher than giraffe nuts <laughs> craig says i love yoga pants who knew yeah you know there was a uh, <laughs> i actually have a funny picture and i can't i can't post it on facebook because my wife will shoot me number one but uh <laughs> I'm, I'm actually in some yoga pants and, and i was gonna post it and say now here's one that's hard to explain but um She's always worried about my professional image. And I'm like, I didn't really, I didn't know I had one anymore. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, there was a uh, Lululemon had a setup and I made fun of the company because they make yoga pants and pff, ugh, whatever, you know? And then of course it went up 40% over the next three or four days. Anyway, this is OPLX. And by the way, it's like I did I did a little research today and it's like I talked to one of you guys, one of your clients, one of my clients. And um, I said, does your wife use this? So he texts his wife and she shoots him a picture. She had a, a big jar of it. They must be rich, right? A big jar of the stuff sitting on their bathroom vanity. So she me, they sent me a picture of that. And then I, I later found out a lot of other ladies are using it. Anyway. This is day four in the IPO, sets the high of the week so far, right? So if day five would have closed at a new closing high right around here or so, that would have been the buy, okay? But then the stock continues to consolidate for a little while. So our new buy is a close above that closing high. I'm in yoga pants now. I don't have on pants. <laughs> of course I do. Of course I do. I'm not a... Who was that host? His webcam fell and didn't have, have on pants. I have on shorts. <laughs> so the buy at B was on the 20th, okay? And that was yesterday, right? And then today we had the mother of all rallies. What I did, by the way, on this one, when it was up, when I had my whatever I was looking for, a couple of points, I put in a trailing stop. It got stopped out on a trailing stop intraday. So that one worked out, knock on wood, pretty good. Buy a B pattern. I know you guys played it too, so congratulations. And again, you want to exit half and then stops at break even. And you know, here's the hard part. And it's hard to watch that that money evaporate. Should it evaporate? God willing, it won't, right? But it's hard to watch it evaporate. But if you're going to catch a 100% winner, a 200% winner, or a 500% winner, you're going to have to be willing to give up some of those open profits. And as I've said, ad nauseum, and it was in Curtis Face Turtle Book. He said that Dennis was okay with you losing open profits, but he was more concerned about you breaking the rules and losing money than he was about 
giving up open profits because that sort of came with the territory or comes with the territory, I should say. Here's another one I played. I did have a losing one, by the way, and I showed that in my Trading Simplified show. So two out of three ain't bad in these IPOs lately. This is what I call a first deep retracement. It's when an IPO takes off and has a deep retracement. It's kind of interesting. You go back seven years and I said, I'm not trading these yet, but I'm thinking about it. And I've since changed my mind. I do trade these, especially in these higher price ones that come public, go kind of crazy and come back in. And what happens is, remember, everything I do has a psychological backing to it, right? So the you can see this thing's taken off. Everybody and their brother is happy. All of a sudden, it shakes all these people out. Some people back here might be bargain hunting. And when this thing goes on to make new highs, anyone who didn't buy it early in the IPO is going to have to put up or shut up, okay? So that's the beauty of a deep retracement like this in an IPO. So here's a, I just want to show you the actual trade or one actual trade. I did this across multiple accounts, but this was just 200 shares. And you don't need a whole lot of a stock like this if you're going to use a pretty wide stop, like a 10 point initial profit target or whatever. And I think in this case, it was what, seven points or so, seven and a half points. But you can see there's a trade, enter here, exit half here. And then I'm trailing that stop higher on the remainder so far knock on wood now and i think i think i was bummed out when i found out these are coffee people but hey it could be a fad right i've got to i've got to remember some of the stuff i've done sometimes you know and so far that's been a pretty good mood arbk here's another one and this one's crypto related uh, my day five is off in this one day five one two three four five day five is right here ignore this this is pre-ipo the high for the week was set on day two. So we go with the closing high, which was here. And in my stock chart show, which I did, with Trading Simplify, which I did, which published yesterday, and I'll get it on the website tomorrow, I talked a lot about inefficiency and hopefully 11% move from where the buy it be triggered, new closing high, right? would happen and luckily knock on wood it did happen or thank god i should say it happened and you see the stocks pull back a little bit i think this was another one today that where i put in a trailing stop on half and i think i posted that in facebook so check the post i think it was a half a point trailing stop so nice inefficient move there so this kind of leads us to the fact that ipos and sometimes not all the times they, the ipos heat up and cool off okay and and that's why I told one person in particular, I don't know if it's more than one, but one person in particular, when they were quitting the trading service because they were doing so well in IPOs, it's like, it won't always be that way. You want to be a little bit more well-rounded and be willing to trade the core methodology. Core methodology is going to be a little bit more or more opportunities longer term than just focusing in on something like IPOs. If you're just starting trading at, at IPOs, strike a car with you, knock yourself out but then you know, work your way into other markets and like i said earlier maybe just trade one pattern and then work your way slowly into other patterns and one one reason i'm saying the thing about the patterns was years ago i remember someone who put out public commentary and he kind of aggravated me because like he'd get my stuff wrong which which was bad influence on me but Every day he was he was showing a new technical indicator. You know, one day he was a big fan of stochastic, and the next day it was this, next day it was that. No matter what the market did, he threw in an indicator that that backfit what the market did and talked about it. Well, I don't think he was trading all this stuff, or he, if he was, he was probably chasing his own tail with a bad trader. If you're trying to trade everything in the world, then you're gonna chase your own tail, number one. But then you're gonna miss so many moves and have the pain of missing out because no matter what you would have had a pattern there but you can't trade that that way now when i say increase your patterns go from trend knockouts to uh, maybe trend knockouts with persistent pullbacks and then maybe trade persistent pullbacks trade landry light pullbacks i don't actually trade them usually per se but i'll just trade a pullback with or without the moving average but add patterns that or let's say trend following in nature not oscillators 
and you know don't use oscillators and then trend indicators and all this other good stuff because you'll end up chasing your own tail so this was kind of a, a, a fun trade the way it all shook out this morning this is a, a shit coin and i go work out every morning around 7 a.m my time now i've got a couple of guys and we've been pretty religious about doing i'm pretty excited about it getting getting back in shape a little bit at least you know muscle wise we're doing weights and uh i'm always trying to get at these last little last minute crypto trades right before i take off to go to the, the, the gym so to speak so i got in this one right there and i put in a limit order to flip out half and when i got back i ended up stopping out of the remainder at break even so this was a nice little pop and it came right back in unfortunately while i was working out so this worked out pretty cool now this thing was up a lot and if you're you're trading these things these these shit coins sometimes you just have to close your eyes and take a leap of faith don't put a lot of money into any one of these things okay and make sure you use money management because you can see as soon as it took off it came right back in but anyway this was kind of kind of a fun thing i just want to show you this one and we'll take a look at the live charts in just one second here's another one and i was able to do a screen capture on this you can see i have a market order and a limit order and it was only like seven cents but that's like a, that's a pretty big gain I think that's like 30, 30% 30 or 20% at least. So I bought here, a couple things were working. Number one, you had a pullback, okay, from new highs, and it was very, very strong. Now, if you waited for the pullback to the moving average, you'd still be waiting, right? And then I like the fact that I think right here, it was probably high up in the relative strength list over here, with just the percent change, and that's what prompted me to buy it. Took partial profits half here, and the stop is going to be at break even on that one. So it's really it hasn't gone too far from it's it's backed up almost all the way to break even, but that's okay. If it gets stopped out, it gets stopped out. And I'll show you. We'll get to the live charts in just one second. So anyway, I reintroduced the 220 EMA breakout system published just 20 years ago. Has it been that long? Oh God, I'm not that old. Please don't be 20 years. Uh, 90, 96, four, 25 years ago. My God, I'm getting old. This is the stocks and commodities. Like I said last week, you could Google this and, and get this little, um, you can get this on the internet for free now. They used to charge you, I think, a dollar fifty. But it was just a simple little trend following system. I wanted to show that a simple system could work. And back then it was a Japanese yen. I was showing this in. And this actually launched my career, as I said last week, with stocks and commodities. So again, just to recap, you need two bars of Landry Light. This is the ACP Landry Light indicator. If you have Stock Charts ACP, the plugin is down here. It's 100% free. You do have to like this video if you're watching it on YouTube to get the plugin for free. And I appreciate that. If you don't like this video, go have no fun somewhere else. All right, day one, day two, meaning that day, two days lows are greater than the moving average. You enter above the two bar high, maybe give it a little bit of wiggle room. It was, I think back when I did the yen, if you go back a slide, it was 10 ticks. So figure out what a little wiggle room would be. In this particular case, maybe give it a little wiggle room to where it would have triggered like, let's say right here. Now this is a spiders, this is an efficient market. I wouldn't rush out and trade this particular trend following system in something like the spiders. But every now and then, especially after it doesn't work for a while, it's due to work again, then you might want to take a look at it. That's something we talked a little bit about last week. And step three, stop out of the 30 EMA, you know, maybe a close below the 30 EMA, or maybe if you get in a longer term trend, give it one bar Landry light below. That that could be a little dangerous, or use some other form of money management might be the best way to go. Kind of like what we do with the core methodology where let that where we let that stop widen out over time. But the moving average is a good place to start. And if the stock or commodity or Forex or crypto doesn't pull too far away from the moving average on the trigger, then your stop isn't too far away. And you live to fight another day. All right, let's go to live charts and 
let's let's take a look at crypto real quick and then we'll we'll go to the we'll take a look at the overall market and then we'll take a look at uh your stock picks so if you want to start asking about stock picks keep those coming let me get this application shared okay so i've got a few lists in here and this other list might have all my current positions let's see if we have the ones that are are highlighted and i've got a different you know i might need to update some of these so i may not be in all these still and as one of you pointed out and, and you know one thing about the facebook group is it does kind of keep me honest to wake me up it's kind of like he's like hey dave you're sharing a lot of stuff it's like oh yeah you know maybe you need to back off a little bit in some of this i think i'm no longer in this block let's see what's going on no it might still be in that one so i've changed up my coding system a little bit in here greens green means i hit the initial profit target and i'm free rolling cyan means the same thing but i have a stop in place okay so let's take a look oops let's take a look at you and know see what's going on there yeah so you can see that i don't know where i got in but it hit the ipt probably on this bar here when it was going up right and then i hit the ipt so i'm free rolling on that but i have a stop in place just in case and this one i think i entered way back here in fact if you look carefully bar one bar two two bars of landry light and then you can see it trigger back here on this i guess 230 ema breakout system little simple system right but when i'm seeing a trigger i probably got in on this bar when i'm seeing something like this trigger and then i see it really begin to move and then the percent change over here is really high and we'll go through a few of these real quick just to show you i'll get pretty excited and then i'll get like one of the ones i showed earlier was a nice little pullback and it was beginning to accelerate out of the pullback this shib was back here in fact this is like a, a 230 ema breakout I bought it somewhere in here why while well, it was going up it was one of the stronger ones it popped up way up on the list and then i hopped on board now CeeLo, i actually bought to show you tonight as a, a 230 ema breakout and i'll start being cognizant of when i take these it's not a fantastic looking crypto and, and maybe i got a little too excited as kind of john alluded to but bar one, bar two, so you'd enter above this high, entry would be right here. And I don't know where I have the IPT. Right lately, I've been using, for the most part, just FYI, I've been using 20% as an IPT, just to make the math easy on these things. Sol's another example I wanted to show you with the, with the, the 230 EMA. Now, I'm not selling you this system or selling you on this system. In fact, I'm giving it away. But when you have inefficient markets, something really simple like this can actually work. And this soul can trend quite nicely at times. And I do, I am getting a little bit of an affinity for it. And, and it's kind of got me a little nervous because a few weeks back I talked to somebody and they're like, oh yeah, I did a little research on that. And that's that that's a really good that's a really good crypto. That one's gonna make it. And it's like, oh, okay. And then it's like what they're doing, and they tried to explain it to me but it seems like it's legit but anyway day one day two so i probably got in right around here and if you need to know the exact numbers of any of these trades i could track them down later and this might have been another one but it was day one day two and then right here would have been the entry based on that silly little pattern now it doesn't always work this well obviously but it can work when you get into a momentum market i don't know if i talked about this one already xlm day one day two yeah we talked about that one so here's the ones that i'm free rolling on but i have a stop in place again just in case and you can see for the most part most of these i just bought because they were going up and we'll get it to we'll go take a look at some real shit coins in just one second grt i bought this one because it was going up but technically i suppose your entry on the 230 would have been right there. Now, this is a breakout system, by the way. Breakouts are prone to fail. If you tried this in a run-of-the-mill stock, 
unless you're in a rip roaring bull market, you probably would lose with this strategy, okay? Everything works better with trend. When these things are trending right now. You can get in, get your money, and then trail that stop higher. Boy, how good would an automated trailing stop be in these things? God, that would be the monster, huh? If anybody finds a brokerage that has that, let me know. This one kind of began to pull back. It was super strong. Got in right about here, so I'm kind of flat fill on that. Pink means I need to take some action, like put a stop in or whatever. Now let me let's go over here to the the ultimate shitcoin list, and then we'll we'll go somewhere else. I was explaining it to he's actually an ex pastor <laughs> why why I I still call them shitcoins and S H Y T and John Z gave me that name and it's 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 stuck and it's pretty much it's pretty common on the internet from what I could tell. I believe in in phraseology how you phrase things is very important. And I think by, by keeping that negative name or name with a negative connotation, it reminds me that these things, these things are for trading, right? It's kind of like the old trading tuna tens, right? The, you silly fool, the tuna's for trading, not eating. Google's tuna story, it's, I've said it too many times. So sometimes, and sometimes we need a keyword in that sentence, and it kind of died out today, because it was really good this morning, this afternoon, not so much. But sometimes you could just pick the, the hottest ones in here and work to stay in the hottest ones in here now look you can see right here i've got the uno so that's a good that makes me feel pretty good i'm free rolling on this one it's high up in the list so that's good but you just go through these and sometimes you can just buy the hottest ones in the list now one little caveat though you actually want to buy them when they're actually making that new high not after they tail off like that so i would pass on on that one, which is actually an index I would see. This looks pretty good. See, I would consider this one, if I was, it, here's the other thing too, by the way. And this is kind of a killer. You know, it's kind of like, how much time do we have? I don't know. But if I'd have seen this one back here, what is about 40 cents, okay, I'd already be up, what, 50% in this one. But I, but I miss this one, obviously. So that's a bit of a bummer. This happy, it's it's kind of already tailed off in here. It's kind of all over the place. But you want to kind of see if there's any pattern to get in on these. Now, this one, I don't like it because it's coming off these low levels, but it is a strong one. You can see it, it is, it is in the process of making new highs. Let's see if we can find something that has some additional setups with it. Now, again, and, and keep in mind, it doesn't always work, but back here, obviously, you're... 230 EMA would have been triggered right there. Let's see if we can find something else. Yeah, this is one that I don't know why I got stopped out of it, but I was in this one earlier and you can see it began to take off. And if you were kind of gutsy, and I know it's crazy, but sometimes you could just go in, like right now it's at what, 95 cents? You could just go in and buy some. You know what, here's what I'm gonna do. Let me see if I can pull this off. Uh, let me go over here and buy some at 95 cents let's see what happens i know it's kind of crazy huh it's just it's just ludicrous i mean even ludicrous would say it's ludicrous if i could get this thing to work hang on one second so it's at 95 cents just bear with me one second this will be kind of um s and g stuff here uh, let's do gotta get in gotta hurry 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 all right, let's see. It's called what? Track. T R A C. We can see if we could. Uh, oh, I, you know why I didn't buy this one? God. Oh. See, here's here's the frustrating part. I can't find it in. I can't find it in a dollar token. I wanted to buy this one down to eighty cents. They don't have it. They have it as Ethereum and against uh, BTC, and it won't let me buy it. Let me buy it against BTC. Let me see if it'll let me. I doubt it. Um, no, I don't think it's going to go through. See, this is frustrating. That's one frustrating thing too. Until I find the Q coins, which has Q coins, which has a lot. But sometimes you just can't. You can't trade these things. I'll leave that trading window open. See if we can find something worthwhile. So you and O so far so good. It's tailed off a little bit, but I'm free rolling there. We'll see what happens. Let's see. It's Ethereum. 
See, this one looks kind of interesting here. So you've got day one, day two. So this is triggered into a 2.30 EMA. I think this is some Bitcoin or something. Let's see. So you get the idea. You want to be in these stronger ones. And sometimes when the market settles down a little bit, now this one's kind of a little funky, but let's see if we can get it to uh, take a look at it. It'd be fun to get one. Now, see, here's one that's going straight out. What is it? Uh, QRDO. Let me just see if I could buy that one and see what happens. QRDO, QRDO, USDT. Okay, so where is it at? 339. Let's see what happens here. See, that. watch the trade go through. Watch trade, watch trade. Did it go? Oh, here we go. Oh, cool. oh, I know what I did wrong. All right, here we go. Probably uh, getting a bad spread. Oh, all right, I can't buy it because I'm in the wrong country. Well, that's another problem, huh? It's a good thing we're, uh... now see this one wouldn't get me too excited because it's coming off of low levels in here. I'd much rather something off of higher levels, but you can see it's it's done pretty well. That's the first time that's happened to me. So I'm a very poor example tonight. So we'll just jump over real quick to the 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 ones that aren't, uh, you know, the ones that are a little bit more, how do you say, legit, as opposed to some of these. But you kind of get the idea. And the point I'm trying to make is something really simple trend following can work. And the other thing too is, let's just do just the opposite for one second. Let's let's put the negative ones in. And here's something that's, I know I'm a nerd, you probably want a part of me, right? But here's something that's amazing. Just the, pay attention to the the 30 day EMA on these things that have EMAs. Let's see if we can find it. See, that one's, see there's nothing to do with that one. And just to pay attention to that 30 EMA and that in and of itself, might keep you out of trouble. That's kind of interesting if it goes to take off again. Nice thrust higher, nice little pullback. So entry about 0 0.005 by uh, how many millions of those could you buy? A lot. And of course, flip them out. But anyway, pay attention as I go through these. Notice that everyone that's below the, oh, there's your Langer Light pullback right there. What is this? Hot cross, whatever the hell that is. Nice thrust higher, okay, nice little pullback to the EMA. Entry would be like right there, okay? See how many possible opportunities, and this is nothing compared to earlier. Okay, avoid that, it's going down. So if you don't learn anything tonight, just don't buy stuff that's below the 30 EMA, right? And that'll, stay, that'll keep you, look, avoid that. You know, that's something you might wanna think about at some point in time. This you wanna leave alone. So sometimes it could be that simple. Anyway, I know I'm a nerd. Let me just shift over to the other coins real quick so we don't run out of time. And then we'll get to your stock questions and I'll go through the market real quick. So let's say we have over here, another low level one. Let me just, I'll stop when I find something. See, that was kind of interesting, but it's still kind of low levels. I mean, I suppose longer term, if it really based out, it might be worthwhile. Look at my soul taking off. I tell you, I like this one. <laughs> Purple. I wonder if I hit the target on that. Let me check. So I've got an IPT in here. And so maybe while I'm doing this webinar, it, it hit the IPT. Okay. And this is your, also your, this is an example. Oh, I know why I took this trade. I wanted to show you as a, a live 30, 230 EMA. Bar one, bar two, interval of the high, entry was right here. Also at that particular time, it was high on the list as a strong crypto. GRT, another one of those 30 EMA things. I don't know, I'm a nerd, but this doesn't get you excited. I'm not sure what will. <laughs> I don't trade crypto, it's made up. Well, so what, you know, just buy, you know, that, that one this morning while I was at the gym, so to speak, it did okay and stopped me out. You know, I have no love for that thing whatsoever. Although I'm starting to like that soul. <laughs> Note to self, might be getting trouble here, right? 
All right, let's shift gears and go to stocks. Any questions, thoughts, comments on crypto? If you watch a recording of this, uh, please leave them below. That'd be great. You know, and I answer all comments that need answering, of course. All right, let's take a look at the P's first. S&P 500, all-time highs, okay? Not that you want to trade a bow tie at higher levels, but you can use the proper orders, uh, proper order of the bow tie moving averages to keep you on the right side of the market. So if we back this chart out a little bit, you can see for the most part, they've been an uptrend proper order for a long, long, long time. They crossed over recently. That gives you, when they begin to cross over, that gives you a caution, okay? And then they flip back up, the uptrend proper order at brand new high. So that's a good thing, obviously. NASDAQ deposit, decent day, not quite new highs, but hey, 0.62%, not a bad day there, not too far away from all time highs. Moving averages come together, getting ready to cross over. Energies, pulling back a little bit in here, but they could use a pullback. They're looking pretty darn good. As you can see, 10 simple, greater than 20 exponential, 20 exponential, greater than 30. As I preach, nothing magical about that, but it can help keep you on the right side of the market. Let's take a look at the Landry light. You can see Landry light all the way up. And sometimes this thing will not trigger if you're, you're playing the, the 230 EMA. Sometimes you'll get it, chop it back and forth with several triggers, and then it finally takes off. That's you want to trade that in and of yourself. The question earlier was, is the reason we're not seeing setups because of the Russell is stuck in this range? No. The reason we're not seeing setups is because the market's going up and the methodology requires a pullback. So as soon as the market pulls back a little bit, we will begin to see setups once again. Don't know if you saw it or not, S&P 500, all-time highs, bow ties, uptrend proper order, NASDAQ deposit, not quite all-time highs, bow ties soon will be at uptrend proper order. And Russell 2000 stuck in a range, as you can see. But look at the bow ties, just kind of noticing this as we speak. Uptrend, proper order. Energies, bam, winning. Looking pretty good in here, as I just said. Pulling back a little bit, but that's okay. Banks stalled out a little, but they've been a pretty good run as of late. Looked like they were rolling over not that long ago. Now they're coming back. A lot of areas, same sort of thing happening. Financials, insurance, at or near new highs. Biotechnology, not so hot. As you can see, not looking too good in here. Health services coming back with a vengeance. They rolled over recently. Looked like they were going to implode. Nope, going straight back up. Retail, none of those areas. Rolled over, nope, straight back up. Transports, they've been ugly forever, but look at them, they're going up too. Tiny Elvis market. And then finally, semiconductors. Nice day today, just shy of all time highs so far. So good. Now the market itself, getting a little overbought in here, but overbought can become even more overbought. And here's what might be happening now. Well, I'll let you know after the fact, but if this market makes new highs like it's doing after just faking everybody out, okay, then uh, all, everybody that poo pooed this is going to have to come back in if or be left behind. And maybe it's because I'm more involved with stock charts now and I'm, I'm paying attention or watching more and more of these gurus over there or fellow traders, whatever you want to call them. But it sure seemed like everybody went a little crazy bearish. And I know I was getting a little concerned too, don't get me wrong. But it made me think, boy, if everybody's that bearish and this thing does not roll over, then maybe it, if it goes back up, a lot of people are going to be on the wrong side of the market. Certainly a lot of people had the wrong opinion. I'm not sure where it went. So I'm going to have to guess that stock. Somebody did want to talk about UPST. Yeah, I like this stock. It's caught my eye a little bit. It needs to pull back a little bit more. If it pulls back too much, though, it's going to pull back to this prior little breakout level. So that's the only caveat there. The other caveat is it might be priced for perfection because through this whole rollover, this thing is going straight up, which is great. Don't get me wrong. But it's also at just off of all time highs, I believe. And let's say they come out with an earnings report that's not is less than Stella maybe, then they might they might tumble really hard. Kind of the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Well, my apologies on the questions. Bring them to Facebook tomorrow, and I promise I'll I'll check in early as, as early as possible, given the markets and everything. 
and see if I can cover some of the questions that are asked. And my apologies again, I don't know, let me just shut down everything. I don't know what could have hit, could have happened, but I, uh, I made a fat finger or something, my apologies. So sorry about that, guys. I appreciate you being here, though. I really do. I want to thank everybody for attending. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Anything unanswered, which obviously we have 18 questions unanswered, and again, I apologize. We'll uh, we could bring it up in Facebook, and you could also reach me if you're not a member, a gold member at least of DaveLander.com, and you don't have access to Facebook. You can reach me at DaveLander.com/contact. Contact. C O N T A C T. I'll put a link in post. I want to thank everybody again for watching and may the trend be with you. Thank you.